Hello, today I want to look at this particularly interesting um, front design with a, a recessed grip. Um, so there's no physical handle, there's a, a piece of walnut wood um, inset into the back of the, uh, each front. And I want to just quickly demonstrate how to set this up as a handle in Interior CAD. And I've um, I succeeded in uh, setting this up as a handle, just done a quick rendering um, and I'm just going to run through uh, the steps involved in, in making this and as you can see there's two sizes, there's a 200mm and a 400mm uh, version of it and um, it involves a tool that you've probably not used before and that's the NC macro. Now you might be thinking why do I need an NC macro to to create that type of handle and you're right that the NC macro is usually something that you need to pass on some some parametric values to a macro that will carry out a set of instructions to create even that type of routing but it, it's used for all sorts of uh, things on, on, on a CNC work center and Interior CAD can just pass on these values to that macro. Now the NC macro has one really uh, useful uh, uh, property and that's um, and let's let's just go to that this this document here and I'm just going to show you what that is. Now if I just use the macro I can insert it into um, this this object and it um, uh, just expects to get some value in the data pane of the info palette and you can edit some CNC code there and you can just pass some basic values in the uh, in the shape pane of the of the uh, info palette. However, that macro also accepts symbols um, and it, these symbols are used instead of the rectangular shape of the macro to uh, for boolean operations that you want to carry out on a custom part. Now you can't use a, 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 a an ordinary extrude uh, for for a boolean operation on the um, on the custom part. So if I if I try to to use this uh, and um, and use it for a boolean operation. So if I go to uh, to models subtract solids, okay, it'll let me do it, but it's, it it destroys the custom part. It's not a custom part any longer. It's now a solid subtraction. And you can see all the texturing has gone and there's no edge banding and you can't see the core material so that's no good. So to get around that limitation we've allowed the macro to accept any shape as a, 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 boolean, opera a boolean operator, a tool basically. So let's set this up. Um, let's first create a symbol um, and call this hexagon. Right now, the next mouse click will define the insertion point. And we don't need to convert to group. We can leave it as a symbol, which is very useful. Which and you'll see why in a, in a second. Now that's my symbol. So that's my three D symbol by the name of hexagon. And if I now select my macro and I give the macro the hexagon as a symbol, the hexagon will be used instead of the rectangular shape of the macro. So that's how you can combine, you can keep your custom part intact and use the macro basically as a carrier object for any um, 3D object. It doesn't even need to be an extrude it can be anything and in fact that's what we've done here because as you can see here we've got the rounded edges we've got the um, let's go to the let's go to the design layer you see the the nice round shape there and that's actually a symbol that we've combined with a macro now it takes a little bit of trial and error because there's no you can't see the tool before you've placed the macro on an object. So um, let's just quickly go back to this document and I will switch to wireframe and now you can see the hexagon. But if I decide to remove the 
macro from the object, you will see that the macro will turn red to show you that it's not connected with anything and the hexagon isn't visible. It's, it only becomes visible again when you pull it back onto the surface of that custom part. Now, so that's why when you set up your, uh, your handle, it's a little bit, uh, takes a little bit of a trial and error. Uh, but it's nothing it's nothing dramatic so um let's uh let's see where this is um so the cabinet handles are here in my document um and i've got the two versions and i've got two versions of the symbols obviously one large and one small one and let's just see how this is set up now um so let's go to edit 3d component and this is my macro and as you would expect you can't see the tool you can't see the symbol, but I've I've referenced the symbol here, as you saw before. I've just I've done the same with this symbol here, and also this is the um, the piece of walnut wood. Um, let's just quickly go into that group and see how that's set up. Now you can see that I've applied that symbol to the uh, this extrude as well. It's not an extrude anymore. It's now a solid subtraction. So if you double click, edit the solid, you can see. This is the symbol. This is the handle routing 400. And I've subtracted that from this extrude. Right? Now, go up, go back. This is the macro. This is the, the piece of walnut wood. And this is my handle. And that's how this gets applied to the, the front um, of, of the cabinet. And, and it's it's been applied to 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 a custom part because this is a custom part which is nested inside the cabinet the cabinet itself consists of these custom parts so whatever you do to any of the custom parts is the same as if you had like a a standalone custom part it doesn't matter if it's in a cabinet or if it's a standalone custom part you can treat it as the same so the yeah. one of the nice side effects of that is that Vectorworks will update all the objects if you change the geometry of the tool. Um, in other words, if you change the geometry of the symbol. Okay, so um, let's before I show you that, let's just quickly um, have a look at how that handle has been applied to the front. And I'm just going to double click this cabinet and you can see that each of these fronts just has this handle referenced and it's set to the top and there's no um there's no uh shift there no no change in position it's just zero zero you could in theory place it in the middle if you wanted to and it would create that cutout in the middle but so and the same same applies to the door here so it's just rotated 90 degrees and it's zero degrees here so that's it's really simple it's it's really just as simple as placing a handle nothing more nothing less okay so um that's that's nearly that's nearly it i just want to show you how easy it is to change the geometry of the routing and you don't really have to do um, a lot of fussing about it's just edit the symbol edit the 3d component of the symbol and here you go that's the that's the 3d component and you can see in OpenGL that that's just basically two fillets and there's a fillet here and a fillet here and if you edit the features you can you know change the radius of each of these fillets that's a, a radius of one millimeter change that to two and it'll change change the fillet if you go to this feature change this fillet um, yeah change that to three millimeters and it's now three millimeters so just change these two parameters on this on this solid and now when i exit you can you can see that it's oh, it actually doesn't want me to do that because there's not enough room left over but i can i can reapply it that's no problem let's just do that quickly it's no problem let's just select that press enter and we've got it back there so if I exit the symbol you can see that it's doing a little bit of bookkeeping now what it's doing is it's updating all the symbols in the document uh, I've done it for the for the large um, handle here so I've yet to do it for the small handle as well edit 3d component 
So let's go in there quickly and um, let's just ungroup this because I know it's not going to want to keep this, uh, this small fillet there. So let's just go to Edit Features. That's my features. Set that to uh, three millimeters, right? And reapply that fillet edge to the current geometry. And uh, oops, oops, got the wrong edge there, I think. Let's just do that again. Here we go. Well, that's that's interesting, isn't it? It's not what I wanted. Ah, oh, never mind. I'll just leave it like that. I'll sort it out later. Okay. Now, doing its bookkeeping, and we're back in the drawing. And you can see it's already updated the symbol there, so I didn't even need to to do much. And what I can do now is I can update the cabinets so it reapplies the handle. Just double click it and exit out of it and there you go and that's the new geometry so you didn't have to worry about the position of the geometry inside of the symbol just edit the uh, uh, the tool and uh, everything gets updated and that's really really handy and uh, that's a, a really powerful feature so uh, I hope that was useful and um, yeah let me let me see your projects uh, and if you've got questions just uh, just ask below in the comments and I'll uh, try and answer everything. Thank you.